In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let's begin our celebration today of the Feast of the Apostle St. Andrew, calling to mind our sins and so preparing ourselves to better celebrate word and sacrament. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. We humbly implore your majesty, O Lord, that just as the blessed apostle Andrew was for your church a preacher and pastor, so he, may he be for us a constant intercessor before you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says no one who believes in him will be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who can call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not everyone has heeded the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what was heard from us. Thus faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Certainly they did. For their voice has gone forth to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, the judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The judgments the of, the of the Lord, Lord are, are true, and, and all of them are, are just. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The judgments the of the Lord, Lord are, are true, true and all of them are just. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup, 
or honey from the comb. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He he said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, you might be interested in where this particular story ends. This is the beginning of the Beatitudes. Jesus calls his first four disciples and immediately tells them how they're going to be fishers of men. Takes them up on the hill and says, see those people down there? Mm, Look at there, there's one who's going to church. Fear of the Lord, that's blessed. Go down and tell them how great God is. Ooh, and look, there's somebody going to the cemetery. Uh, uh, Yeah, they're mourning. They're blessed. You go down and tell them how great God is because he's going to raise up the dead and all through the Beatitudes he's beginning to shape the ministry of his apostles why do they have such energy why do they have such excitement why do they have such uh, uh, enthusiasm to head all over the world because they know people are blessed and deserve to know why they are blessed They are blessed in the reality of God's love for them. That's the good news that Andrew was so anxious to go and share. Just a little historical tidbit for you, modern researchers uh, know that um, traditionally Andrew was crucified on a X-shaped cross. And uh, modern researchers say that that would be the far better way to crucify somebody than to put them on this kind of a cross, that on the X, It's uh, much more painful, but lasts a lot longer. And that was the whole idea of what the Romans wanted to do, was to make crucifixion long enough, painful enough, that the people passing by would have to see it. It didn't go away with just a shot of a needle or a zot of an electric chair. It was meant to last for days. And so when we see that Andrew dies on that that cross that's shaped like an X, probably so is Jesus. And we can see that then he emulates his master. He loves God enough to do what God did. Also, we know from the text today that, and some of the other texts that go on in the gospel, Andrew is the younger brother of St. Peter. He's not the old timer. And he is probably much younger And uh, we know from the impetuosity of Peter that he couldn't have been a very old person. So it could be very well that when we hear the name Andrew, we should think the child whom Jesus brought into his midst and say, unless you become like him, you'll never make it into the kingdom of God. It gives us then some reason to uh, have a greater understanding and a a better image of who Andrew was. He's the one they picked on. He's the one they made carry the luggage. He's the one who had the, the lunch bag that mom packed for him that morning with two fish and a couple of loaves of bread in it. 
that's Andrew. You kind of put that in, you say, whoa, yeah, well, he was the one that would, loved his mother enough to take the lunch bag, even though Peter said, I'm not going to carry a lunch bag. I could just hear Peter saying that. <laughs> we have t- today, too, uh, one of the great realities of uh, the letter to the Romans is if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. When we believe in our heart, it has to, it has to burst out. It has to become the confession of our mouth. And so Peter reminds us that if we're truly going to emulate the apostles, we have to have faith. Think of the faith of these four young kids. They left everything they knew. They were fishermen, they weren't, they weren't preachers. They left it all to follow Jesus. They had tremendous faith in who this Jesus was and what Jesus' message was about and why they ought to be part of it themselves. And so they believed deeply in their hearts but then they confess it with their tongues. We see how hard it was for them to learn that in the Gospels. But we know that it worked, that it settled into them so deeply and so powerfully that they transformed the Roman Empire in a matter of months, not just years. That's how excited they were to proclaim the good news. And so then Peter has this little recipe down here at the bottom uh, that tells us how we ought to be going out and doing our own ministry if we want other people out there to, uh, to know the name of Jesus Christ and call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him when they haven't believed? And how can they believe if they hadn't heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? And so there is a a whole kind of a model that we should be following. And we do at the end of Mass. We say, get the heck out of here and proclaim the peace to the world. We say, go home and love and serve the Lord. We say, leave this place and do something for God. And so we do send people out. And we always invite people when we send them out to live the life of a committed Christian. And just by the witness of the life, they do the the preaching. And then people can hear that with their heart and with their soul rather than just their ears. And what they hear transforms them so that they can believe. And once they believe, they will call upon the name of the Lord. And so you can see that in the work of the church, we are doing our best to follow the the, the recipe that St. Paul gave us in his letter to the Romans. Why? Because we want people to understand that in Jesus Christ, there is very real salvation. Salvation from our sins, salvation from the destruction that ultimately, maybe four billion years from now, who knows when, will claim this planet. And yet there is resurrection in Jesus Christ. Resurrection to life that will never end. And so we celebrate St. Andrew and all of the apostles who began the proclamation of the good news so that you and I could hear it and you and I can confess it. Well, let us confess what we have heard. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Anytime we gather together in faith, our thoughts turn to the needs of the world that's outside the doors. And so we raise our voices in prayer, not so much for ourselves, but for those who could not or would not join us. We pray first for the universal church, much too large to fit into our small space, and yet constantly proclaiming the good news around the world. We pray that it might do so with great and enduring success. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the leaders of nations, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, all the leaders of whatever faith, that they might always see in their people the dignity of human life, life worth serving rather than leading. We pray to the Lord. We pray too for all of our modern day apostles, our bishops, all of them everywhere around the world that they might truly aspire to be shepherds who follow Jesus Christ with fidelity, with excitement and enthusiasm, so that they might preach and teach and be heard. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for our community here in Toledo. We pray that there will be an end to violence of all kinds, whether it's domestic violence in the home or whether it's shooting people on our streets, or anything in between, that it might stop in the name of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. We pray too for all those who are sick and suffering, especially those many of our own parish who would love to be here, but cannot be because they are hospitalized, homebound, or unable to get to join us. We pray that God might touch them with his healing power we pray to the Lord. And for all those who have died and standing before the throne of God, they might remember all of us in their praise and in their adoration. We pray to the Lord. Almighty and loving God, we have shared with you these, our humble concerns, in the hope that they might be your mighty concerns to answer them in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this bread which we offer to you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us spiritual food. Lord, may the mingling of this water and wine make us partakers in your divinity as you humbled yourself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this wine which we offer to you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us spiritual drink. Lord, be pleased with this sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins and cleanse me of all of my iniquities. My sisters and brothers, pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. Lord, 
Grant us, almighty God, that through these offerings which we bring on the feast of St. Andrew, we may please you by what we have brought and be given life by what you have accepted through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. <coughs> Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, especially St. Andrew, whom we honor today, with St. Patrick, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with those around us a sign of God's peace. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May communion and your sacraments strengthen us, O Lord, so that by the example of the blessed apostle Andrew, we who carry in our body the death of Christ may merit to live with him in glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration is ended. Let's go to live the Gospels with our lives. <laughs> 